Hey everybody, this is Point Shooter. Uh, today I'll be reviewing a Glock Model 78 field knife. This is a uh, relatively new knife for me. I've had it for about two weeks now. I purchased it at my local gun shop for $30. And let me say, this is I've been really impressed by this knife. For the price point, I wasn't sure if it was going to really work out well. I had seen different things on the forums. Some guys love it, some guys hate it. But I figured that I would give it a try. This has become my hiking knife. This is the fixed blade that I will take in the woods with me now. I've really been impressed by it. The overall length of this blade is 11.25 inches and it weighs uh, 7.5 ounces for the blade itself. We also have a uh, polymer sheath. The sheath adds 1.5 ounces and so total we have a 9 ounce package. The blade is made of spring steel. It's quarter inch thick. Uh, the only disadvantage of the spring steel is that it's not very rust resistant. Um, the finish also wears off pretty quickly, um, as you can see by the uh, the markings on mine. I've done some pretty hard work with this uh, knife over the past couple weeks. This blade is available in three different variations. I have the olive drab version here, uh, model 78, which is the plain edge. On the uh, 81, you get a saw blade, uh, saw edge on the top of the knife. Uh, some guys really like it. Uh, I've looked at it and it's pretty coarse. Uh, I think it would work well as a saw, but I think that in most situations that I'm going to be in, that is camping and hiking or survival situation, I'm probably not going to need that saw. Uh, yesterday I was able to do pretty much all my camp tasks uh, with this knife, uh, batoning, chopping, and it served very well in those roles. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the performance of this blade. As I mentioned, uh, it did my camp tasks pretty well, but the only problem is it is a very lightweight blade. For the money, you're getting a, an awesome knife, but you're going to have to understand it's very lightweight. At 7.5 ounces, this blade does not have a lot of heft when you want to go and chop. It's going to take more effort for you, the, the user, to go through larger pieces of wood. Uh, I was going through about 6 inch logs yesterday, and yeah, it took a lot of effort to go through. One of the best things though that I've done for this knife was I had the edge reprofiled. I did it myself, and let me say it made a huge improvement in the performance. When this knife comes out of the box, the edge is pretty terrible. It's about a 40 degree grind on it when you first take it out of the box. And what I've done is I've reprofiled it myself to 20 degrees. Uh, to do that, I've used an electric uh, sander with a fine belt and then used diamond stones to get it to where I wanted it. Uh, the way I take care of all my knives is with ceramic rods uh, and diamond stones. And I find that I've been able to keep a really good edge on this. Uh, even after heavy batoning and heavy chopping, it's not taken much to get it right back to razor edge. One of the things that also is nice about this knife is the handguard, which is the grip, which is made of a polymer. Um, this is, I'm told, the same uh, polymer that Glock uses in their handguns. Um, the handguard is very well designed and is similar to, uh, the whole knife is very similar to a bayonet style. Uh, but the handguard is adequate for what we're doing. This works as a cap lifter, so if you have a bottle, you can uh, pop your cap with that. And it also, uh, I find, works very well to keep your fingers out of the way. I've also used this knife for throwing, and I've had a friend who, uh, who showed me about throwing this knife, and I think with practice, uh, you can get very good at it. Personally, it's not my favorite employment of this. I see this more as a, uh, as a, as a camp tool, but if you choose to use this as a defensive knife, sure, it'll work in that respect. And I'll tell you, uh, I enjoy having it with me when I'm hiking for emergency use both survival or defensive use if necessary. Again, we're talking about a $30 knife, so this is, uh, this is very inexpensive compared to some of the survival designs that are out there, which may go in the $100 to $200 range. Let's talk a little bit about the sheath right here. Uh, I'll put the knife in. So you can hear it locks with a very solid click. Uh, this is a very solid sheath. You're not going to be able to accidentally lose that blade. Uh, in fact, just by pulling on it, you really can't put enough force on it to, uh, to remove it. What you've got is you've got this little locking tab which engages in the handle. Makes it close very solidly. 
Some people have talked about uh, having difficulty getting it out of the sheath one-handed. I don't have a problem with that personally. Um, what I do with, uh, with my knife is I will take my index finger under the blade guard and then take my thumb to release that hand, the, the knife. And I find this works very well. And the bottom line is with whatever system you use for retention, you've got to practice with it. Build up that muscle memory. And over time it becomes very second nature. The belt clip on this knife is sheath is very adequate for, um, for daily carry or uh, in the woods. What I like about it is that it fits your uh, BDU belt, it fits an Alice belt. It's a two and a half inch wide uh, clip, so it'll fit pretty much any sort of belt you're going to be wearing on that day. And to close it, you simply slide to the side and then it locks shut very, uh, very firmly. On the bottom we have a drainage hole, so if you get water inside the knife it's going to let it drain out. Again, a problem with that spring steel. You definitely don't want water to sit inside of here, whatever kind of knife you have. Um, you also have a leg tie down, so if you are going to be doing a lot of movement with the knife and you want to have that tie down on your leg, you can do that. I think that for this knife, uh, it's very important to keep it oiled up. If you use WD-40, REM oil, uh, you want to have something with you to keep it, uh, keep it oiled up while you're using it. As you can see, the finish is going to wear off, and that's just a function of this knife. Really not much you can do about it. What I like about this knife, though, is the lightweight. Uh, when it's clipped on my 56 pack, I use a uh, military-style uh, 56 butt pack when I hike to carry my, uh, my gear and survival equipment in. I find that this knife rides unobtrusively, and you barely even know it's there. One of the disadvantages, though, of that sheath, though, is this is very, uh, very rigid, and if it's on your belt, it's, it could get caught on vines, and as I found yesterday, uh, it's not the most comfortable when you're doing a lot of heavy movement, uh, which is part of why I enjoy having it clipped on my pack. Again, the most important thing though when you get this knife is to make sure you reprofile that edge because right out of the box you're going to have a hard time doing many wilderness chores with it. Sure, it'll cut, uh, and if you sharpen it on a stone at that 40 degree edge, sure, you could probably cut paper with it, but for uh, real serious wilderness chopping, uh, you really need that edge brute profiled and hopefully I can put a couple pictures at the end of this video to show you uh, the chopping we did yesterday. I pitted this knife yesterday against a Benchmade 155 which was on loan to me from a friend, uh, the Osborne, which is uh, a knife of the same size but heavier weight. Uh, I found that uh, the Benchmade has a flatter grind than this. This blade, as you can see at the top, is a very thick slab of steel which then um, tapers down the bottom half here and you've got the, the relief edge that I've put on here. Uh, out of the box, this is not very good for uh, most chopping and ideally you would have a flat, I believe, a full flat grind in the field. Some guys may not like a full flat grind, but it's personally what I, uh, what I find works best. But again, this is a $30 knife and we're going to take it for what it is. The one nice thing for batoning with this knife is the upper clip. The upper clip on this knife is not very sharp. Um, it works well with batoning and I found that with the Benchmade yesterday, which has a sharpened upper clip, that it just was chewing the heck out of the batons and you really can't baton very easily. But the Glock knife has an advantage because it allows you to baton through. Uh, some guys for, uh, for defensive use may like to sharpen that upper clip. I left mine the way it was because I'm not really anticipating using it for that role. But if that's what works for you, then go for it. Uh, it obviously has a pretty good point on it now that I've reprofiled it. Uh, that's really the biggest drawback about this knife is that out of the box, the edge is pretty terrible. But overall, if you're looking for a uh, lightweight knife to take with you hiking or camping or a knife to stick in your survival kit, I really believe that the Glock knife is uh, the way to go. For the value, you really can't beat it. The value and weight. And it's one of those knives that is available from many places online, so you can hopefully find it in your area. And if you can find a, uh, a knife person, a sharpener, to reprofile that edge for you, this knife should really excel. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my review. Uh, stay tuned because I'll have a lot more knife reviews, knife and gear reviews coming out in the near future. So I hope, uh, I hope this helps you all out. Take care and stay safe. Bye.